It's funny to realize that it was just a few math problems and some metal that enabled me to get here. My name is Dennis McClellan, and I am a spaceaholic. And if you asked me what was my motivation for wanting to go to the moon, I wouldn't even go into the ever since I was a little kid spiel like everyone else. For me, it'd be one little movie title, Space Odyssey 2001. The thought that if I wanted to, one day I could actually take a trip so far away that the only thing bordering my new hangout would be the world itself was severely intriguing. But there was only one thing holding me back. A little thing called the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, a.k.a. NASA. You guys definitely have it coming to you later. Basically, these guys kept me from reaching my longtime dream and forced me to take matters into my own hands, which I have, and quite successfully, I might add. I built my own fully functional space vessel. And in case you get inspired from this, here's how I did it. Most of the parts I just took from my car. At the time, I figured that if I made it back and showed everyone what I'd done, I'd make more than enough money to buy another one, or 12. The only hard part was figuring out how to batch 238,000 miles worth of rocket fuel, and how to double it. Getting the kerosene was easy. Me and my friend Rick just jacked it from his dad's fuel company, which they probably won't miss. But the liquid oxygen I had to make, a lot of. That shit delayed my trip for a week. I'm still pissed at that. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to make liquid oxygen. No pun intended. You just take nitrogen and oxygen gas and make it really, really cold by compressing it and expanding it a few times. Specifically, negative 183 degrees Fahrenheit. I, however, had to do it the ghetto way by use of mini frost turbines that I made to fit my freezer since I don't have a laboratory. And after what seemed like years, I was able to derive a liquid sample from the nitrogen and oxygen. Then, after heating it slowly, I removed the nitrogen from it and got what I wanted. After that, I mixed it in with the kerosene and got my fuel. However, you need to be extremely careful. Liquid oxygen can ignite from even the smallest fraction of a spark. So if you are an idiot, you should not be anywhere near this stuff. Ironically, the mathematical blueprint for making this trip wasn't as difficult as I expected it to be. Of course, there were a few minor dead ends that I'd run into trying to make certain equations work, but it's like George Bernard Shaw says, science never solves a problem without creating ten more. Then it was basically just about creating a hull that would withstand the pressure of space and the thrust from the engine. I found some great sheet metal for cheap. And as for materials, let's just say that nails and mucilage are going to be on back order for a while where I'm from. And finally, the day came. That sparkling day where everything you worked hard for connects to make a picture-perfect masterpiece. I was ready. I'm 22 right now, and out of approximately 8,000 of the days that I've been alive, today would have to be the best one. Now for the hard part. The sun just went down, so it's going to start to get pretty cold. The stars seem so much more intimate from here. Mom. Dad. You always told me to take ownership of everything I do. Good or bad. And, uh, this is one of those times. And as of right now, I... I can't really tell if this situation would be considered either. Good because I finally reached my dream, but bad because I'll never see you guys again. The, uh... The rocket fuel burned at about ten times the rate I expected it to. So, in other words, I don't have a way back. This is my goodbye.
Keela and Rachel. <clears throat> Keela and Rachel, my two beautiful little sisters. I'm sorry for all of the uh, emotional bruising I gave you. Just being a big brother. Rachel, keep working on those left side kicks. That's your... Uh, I know that's your weak side. Have a good tournament Thursday. And um, I'm sorry I'll miss it. Rick. Buddy, buddy, buddy. We made it. I'm on the moon. Thanks, man. I'm going to miss you. And if you take any heat for this, if people see it, then to those people, go screw yourselves. Rick has contributed to history and should be commended for it. Okay. And my last shout-out is going out to NASA, who thought it would be all right to charge people 20 to $100 million for a ticket to the moon which is actually impossible for a person from my background to even consider making in three lifetimes. I know, because I did the math. This also goes out to the masses whose dreams you've completely obliterated by overcharging. Speaking of which, I actually brought all of my receipts from all of my material purchases, added it all up, and found that my entire balance for this trip was a measly... $1,455.83. Answer me that one, NASA. The video you are currently watching is streaming to Planet Earth live on plenty of hacked stations via a few personal satellites that I left behind about 50 to 100,000 miles back so that the hopefuls do know. Scratch that. So that the hopefuls witness that discount space travel is possible. So now I just have a few last words for you, NASA. Fuck you. I did it. On my own. Without a fortune. This is Big Titty Grabber 89 signing out.